Kuzu Zangpula to all my dear students, welcome to Bhutan e-learning project. I'm Sangeet Sreng. Today, I'll be taking you through a geography lesson, key stage three, which is for class seven and eight on the topic settlement. So before I actually touch on the topic and then go deeper into the content, let me give you an overview of the lesson. The overview of the lesson, firstly, I have is the objectives. Secondly, the introduction and then the background. Thirdly, I will be talking on the classification of settlement, then patterns of settlement, and finally, I will be touching on the factors affecting the patterns of settlement. So, now let me give you, outline it one by one. So, firstly, on the objectives. So, the objectives that I have for this lesson is firstly, at the end of the lesson, you all have to be able to explain the concept of settlement, discuss two types of settlement, and describe patterns of settlement, and finally, illustrate, you should be able to illustrate the patterns of settlement with some examples. Now, for doing this, firstly, we will brainstorm for a while, about five to seven seconds on the wood settlement. That is our topic for today. And then I request you all to brainstorm for five to six, seven minutes on the wood settlement. Well, now I'm sure that all of you have brainstormed and then got some ideas on the topic settlement. And then now I'll be taking you through a brief introduction and then the background on the word settlement. When we are talking about the settlement, it has a direct link with the shelter that we people need and the shelter is the basic need of the people or the human beings that exist in this world. Uh, wherever we go in the world, every people will be having a shelter to live in, and this is the basic need where they, it is very, very necessary for the people or the human beings. So people need shelter to protect ourselves from the heat, cold, rain, or the, from the wild animals. And then settlement usually develops in areas where there is water, fertile soil, favorable climate, and where there is economic opportunities. Economic opportunities means that it is talking about economic opportunities like the employment, and then the transportation, and then it talks on the communication. So when there is a good uh, transportation system, when there is a good facilities on the communication, when there is employment opportunities in a particular place, all the people, you and me, all the people like to settle down in that particular place. So that is the economic opportunities. Now, we also know that the size and the patterns of settlement differ from one place to another. And then it keeps on changing over time. And then it never remains the same. And it always keeps it changing only. In a settlement, people live a systematic life usually sharing a common occupation, language, religion, and then culture. Settlements are broadly classified into two, that is urban settlement and then the rural settlement. So settlements are further divided based on the patterns again. So it's again, in other words, I can say that it is subdivided into different, different uh, types or the pattern based on the patterns. So in a simple sentence where we can all understand in our own way, settlement is a place where people live and it consists of a single or group of houses. It doesn't mean that it should be having, when we are talking about the settlement, we should be having a lot of houses built in that particular place. Even if there is a single house also, it could be a settlement. So you can go through this picture once again here, see the picture, and these are the examples of settlements that we are having in our own country. 
And then the second one, an example on the settlement that we are having in our country only. Now, I want you to analyze and then see which is the urban settlement and then which is the rural settlement. Now, after we have seen that picture, I'm sure that you might have got some ideas which picture talks about the urban settlement and then which picture talks on the rural settlement. Now, if you have known and then if you are clear with this idea, now let me take you to the types of settlement. So as of now, I will be taking you on the rural settlement. So rural settlement are generally small group of houses and is a place where most of the people are engaged in agriculture, forestry and the mining works. And basically it talks on the people where the people are taking on the primary activities like the agriculture works, the forestry works and then the mining works. So it talks the, the people who are living in that, uh, that particular place or the community, they are engaged in such primary activities. And then you can see in the picture also, again, I have a picture for you, a setting which is taken in the rural settlement. So this is the rural settlement that we have in our country again. And then now going to the second one, we have the urban settlement. So urban settlement is a place where clusters of buildings are found and most of the people engage in activities like manufacturing, commerce, trade, transport, and then banking. So when we are talking about the activities like manufacturing, commerce, trade, transport, and banking, it basically talks on the secondary and then tertiary activities that the people are taking up. And then now see the picture here. This is Thimphu city. And then from this picture, we can clearly get the, how the, is the setting of the urban settlement, where we can see a lot of buildings which are built very uh, close to each other. And then even we can see a lot of vehicles plying on the roads. So this is the setting of the urban settlement. We have seen the rural settlement and then as well as the urban settlement. Now it's very, very important for us to know the difference between the rural settlement and then the urban settlement. As we are studying in class seven and eight, so I have listed the simple uh, sentences which can be understood by you all very easily. The first difference in the rural and then urban settlement is in the rural settlement, People mostly dwell in traditionally constructed houses and in urban settlement, people mostly dwell in modern structure buildings. I hope you have got the ideas from the picture itself that uh, I have shown you earlier. And the second difference is on the living standard. Rural settlement, they have the low living standard there, but in the urban settlement, there is high living standard. And the third one is on the size of the population. So in the rural settlement, we usually see the small population there. And then in the urban settlement, we can see a large population settling in that uh, settlement. So the people who are in the rural settlement, they are engaged mostly on the primary activities, primary activities like the agriculture, forestry, and the mining works. And then coming to the urban settlement, people are engaging themselves in the secondary and then tertiary activities that is like the manufacturing goods and providing services to the public. And the, the final differences that I have for you is in the rural settlement, there is less modern facilities comparing to the urban settlement. Whereas in the urban settlement, we have the more modern facilities. So when there is more facilities like that, then I'm sure that it will impact on the living standard also. And thus it is having a uh, highest living standard in the urban settlement. Knowing the difference between, between rural settlement and the urban settlement, let us switch on to the patterns of settlement. When we are talking about the patterns of settlement, it's very simple. We have in our day-to-day -day life also, we wear ko and kira. And then on ko and kira, we have different patterns that are printed on the ko and kira. So just in the similar manner, just like that, we have also the patterns on the settlement also. So 
it's very important for us to know what is pattern of settlement. Now, when we are talking about the patterns of settlement, we have five main and then prominent settlements. One is nucleated or clustered settlement. The second one is dispersed settlement. The third one is linear settlement. Fourth one is terrace settlement. Then the fifth one is circular settlement. This is the overview of the settlement patterns. So one is dispersed, the nucleated, linear, and the isolated. You might be wondering again that the isolated settlement is not here. But I like to say to you that, of course, there are many, many, many the patterns of settlement. But as of now, to your level, for the level of class 7 and 8, we will be only touching on these five main and then prominent topics or the patterns of settlement. Firstly, I will be talking on the nucleated or the clustered settlement. So in this pattern of settlement, houses are built very close to each other. And then I wanted to say that it will also be this nucleated and the clustered pattern of settlement will be there in the village also. Before we actually go to the uh, next topic, I have two questions for you. So let me ask you the first question. Can you think of such settlement in your locality or in our country? And the second question says, what could be some factors which results in this kind of settlement? So you can think over these two questions before we go to the next topic. Okay, uh, now I'm sure that you might have thought the answers for these two questions that I have already posed to you. Now, I have also my own examples for you and then let us look at the examples together. So this is Ural Valley in Pumtang and the other one is the Merak and Saktin in Tashikang. Now with this, I'm sure you have got enough idea on what is nucleated and the cluster settlement. Please remember the definition of nucleated and then the cluster settlement as well as you should be having some answers for the questions that I have asked you. Now let us go to the next topic which is talking on the dispersed settlement. Dispersed settlement, in this type of settlement the houses are built far away from each other. It is found in the eastern and in the southern part of our country. So let us see the examples also here. This diagram shows how dispersed settlement is formed or developed. And then we could see the houses are built very far away from each other. And they see here also. And then we have four houses here, which is built far away from each other. And then likewise, we can see in this picture also see that the houses are built from uh, far away from each other and then when such settlements are seen we call it as the dispersed settlement. So now let us go to the next topic again. So this is the third pattern of settlement, the linear settlement. This type of settlements are usually built in lines along the riverside or along the roadside. You can see clearly here in this picture the hand is showing the linear settlement and then most of the houses in these patterns of settlement serves as the shops and then hotels. Examples we have like Tilegang and then Lobisa, Punakha and then Chamkha town. This is Chamkha town in Pumtang. The fourth pattern of settlement is terrace settlement. This pattern of settlement generally develops on the hills and then slopes of the mountains and then it is formed and then it is developed just like a step, just like the, our footstep. And these houses are spread across the stripes of the land which are built like the steps on the slopes of the hills or people here practice the terrace farming. And then we can see in the picture here that the houses are built in the, just like the footstep and the one is built here the other one is here and then one is built uh, so the other houses are built at the bottom of, of a mountain 
and then we could see the steps also see here the first one the second one and then third one it goes down like that like a step so if we see such settlement then we can say that this is a terrace settlement okay now let me take you to the final pattern of settlement which talks on the circular pattern so circular pattern of settlement develops around important cultural or geographical features so when we have the like the temples or the monasteries or the fortresses or the institution like the health hospitals like the schools the settlements keep on developing around that institution for example let us see in this example uh, picture here so there is a temple here and then all the settlements are developed around that temple and in the similar manner we could see Hazong also here around Hazong we could see a lot of settlements taking place so if we could see such a settlement taking place around the institution or the monastery or the temple or the lakhs then we can term that as the circular pattern of settlement now we have seen five patterns of settlement and then the next topic I have for you is on the factors affecting these five patterns of settlement. So first one is the availability of water. Second is fertility of soil, good education and medicine facilities, security, relief of an area, weather and climate. Now let me explain you one by one here. Firstly, I'll be talking on the availability of the water. When there is good and then enough adequate amount of water in the particular place, people like to settle there. So it also has some impact on the settlement. And the second talks on the fertility of the soil. If there is good fertile soil in a particular place, people also like to settle down there. And then if the soil or the land is infertile, then people won't be settling in that place. And in the third uh, point we have is good education and medical facilities. When there is good education facilities, people like to settle down in that particular place. For example, if we have a school, people like to settle down in and around that particular school. And in a similar manner, we, it goes to the medical facilities also. When there is a good medical facilities, people like to settle down around that hospital or the healthcare centers. The next point we have is on the security. So people also see the security, the safety of themselves. And if there is threat, I'm sure that people won't be settling down in that particular place where there is threat. And when there is a natural calamities and disasters and when there is emergencies, we need each other to help each other. And for this also, people settle together and then people see their safety and then security. So these are some of the reasons which are hampering or having some impact on the patterns of settlement. In the fifth point, we have the relief of an area, which is also a major factor affecting the patterns of settlement. Relief of an area, when we are talking about the relief, it actually means on the landscape of an area or a particular place. If the landscape or the relief is very, very nice. For example, if it is in the plain, then people like to settle in that particular place where there is good landscape and if it is very plain. But if it is on the mountainside and on the hilly side, no one likes to settle down in that particular place. So relief is also one of the major factor affecting the set patterns of settlement. Next, we have is weather and then climate. Weather and climate also plays a very major role in impacting on the patterns of settlement. So people always like to settle down in a particular place where there is very favorable, favorable weather and then climate condition. So if the climatic or the weather condition is not good, for instance, people won't be settling in a place where it is very hot and people won't be settling in a place where it is very cold. So we always like to settle in a place where we have the favorable weather and then climatic condition. And then the final one we have is the economic opportunities. When we are talking about the economic opportunities, 
I have already explained to you when we are talking on the settlement that economic opportunities talks about the good job opportunities or employment opportunities. People will obviously, certainly settle down in that particular place. And in a similar manner, if there is good system of the transportation and then communication system, then people will settle in, particular, in that particular place. So economic opportunities also affect the patterns of settlement. Now with this, let me come to the closure of the lesson. I have three questions for you. My first question is, identify the pattern of settlement in the area you live. Give reasons to support your answer. Again, I'm repeating the question for you. Identify the pattern of settlement in the area you live. Give reasons to support your answer. Please take note of this question and then think over it. Now, let me give you the second question again. Which settlement pattern would you prefer to live in and why? Let me repeat it. Which settlement pattern would you prefer to live in and why? Please think over it again. Then the third question is very easy for you. Sketch any three patterns of settlement with one example each. Sketch any three patterns of settlement with one example each. So with these three questions, I'll conclude my lesson. And then I wish you a very enriching learning. And thank you so much. Thank you.